Welcome to Sculpture Studios. Arguably the saviour for Britain in the Second World War was the Spitfire aircraft. Originally designed by R.J. Mitchell, the Spitfire remains as one of the most iconic air vessels from the era and is used as a symbol for the victorious defeat of German air forces. Throughout its life, the design of the Spitfire continued to develop over the years, improving in speed, engine power, manoeuvrability and overall quality of the flying attributes. Over 20,000 Spitfires were made, with under 100 today still being airworthy. Not that our contribution will add to this number, as we're not really anticipating our fiberglass models taking off anytime soon, but we're making some miniature replica Spitfires nonetheless. We've had various requests this year for these models to be made, due to the fact that now it's 2015, it's the 70th anniversary of the end of World War II. For this particular batch that you're going to see in this video, these planes serve for a secondary purpose as well, and this is to commemorate the 75th anniversary of the 42 founder Kingsland Squadron Air Training Corps. This is all in recognition for the squadron's freedom of the borough ceremony. Our client and flight lieutenant for the squadron, Pauline Petch, has asked us to create 23 planes with an additional 24th aircraft that we can decorate ourselves. We're going to donate this to the cause and the arts trail with our own sponsored Sculpture Studios design. We begin by outsourcing a scale replica model that we can create a mould from, and due to the high level of detail on the plane, with all the metalwork panelling and seam lines, we're creating a silicon rubber mould. This will be made in two halves, top and bottom, and will be able to withstand the manipulation needed in order to create a production run of the number required. Clay is used to initially surround the plane so that the silicon rubber can be applied for the first half, and then we go over with a glass fibre jacket to help the rubber retain its shape while it's being casted. From this mould we'll be able to create the 24 casts needed for Pauline's event, and many more for any future projects, as these are sure to be a popular item this year. On our website we actually have a page with items that are available for immediate casting, and we'll add this Spitfire replication to that category. Usually, due to the scale and diversity of the objects we make, we don't have the space to keep every mould, but for these kind of sculptures that are popular requests, they're worth retaining the moulds for. Once the silicon is set, and the glass fibre has been applied to create the jacket on top, all the flash is then trimmed off round the edge. This makes the fiberglass safer to handle, and generally neatens the mould up. Once the master pattern has been carefully extracted, to save any pieces unnecessarily breaking off into the mould, we lay the rubber back down into the jackets to save them going baggy. We then clean up any bits that come off the polystyrene pattern, and trim away any rubber pieces that we see as excess material in the mould. These are then ready for casting, and we begin by adding a silicon spray. This helps protect the rubber from the slightly corrosive resin going on top of it, and it doubles up as a release agent. By then applying a white gel coat first to the inside of the mould, this leaves a smooth surface on the exterior of the plane before we add the fibreglass mat. With the rubber being easy to manipulate, we can take it out of the jacket, and the casts come out quite easily. What we've done is gone over with 2 ounces of glass fibre, and this means they'll be strong, durable, weather resistant for outside use, but still relatively lightweight. With all the casts being churned out of the moulds, they're trimmed down to the gel line, and then they need to be joined. Here you can see the tops and bottoms of each plane cast. They're lined up and fixed together using chop strand and resin on the inside, and then any excess material is cleaned up along the seam lines once the resin has gone off. This way we end up with a nice clean surface to fill, and we go over with car body fillers and sandpaper to make good the join. This makes it look as though the plane is made from one complete cast. We've purchased some propellers online for remote control planes, and we've taken these apart and we've fixed them into the nose cones that we've also made a mould for. With the white gel coat as a really good base layer, we go over this with an application of car body primer 
and this gives each plane a nice hard surface ready to be painted on. It's now time to invite the client down to the studio and to see what they think. With Aidan, Pauline's going through how the planes are going to be attached to the various locations around Kings Lynn, and here you can see the metalwork brackets that we've had made for each plane. Pauline mentioned that this was a momentous occasion and that she'd be looking forward to it to finally make it happen. With the 23 planes now being taken away to be decorated by the various other sponsors, it was time for us to start working on our own. Here we've got Gary Constable, an old friend of Aidan's from years ago, and he's come down to the studio to add a little mutant design flair to the plane. He specialises in custom artwork and designs for classic cars and VWs, and has worked with Aidan on multiple occasions in the past. What we're going for here is a collaboration of old and new work from our website, along with designs from the net that we think would suit the plane. Seeing as the main bulk of our work is for film, television, theatre, exhibition and public pieces of sculpture, we wanted a good collaboration of all of these into the final design. We wanted a nice blend so that A, people might recognise some of the work, and B, it would simply be nice to look at as a collaborative piece of art. The working area on the plane is cleaned up first, and then the designs are montaged onto the surface using tracings, and the piece starts coming together. Everything is first being drawn on with a fine liner for all the black detail, and a variety of colours are airbrushed on to bring the work to life. We really wanted to take our time with this, both to make sure it was finished to a really high standard, and so that it wasn't sent off early and could be a surprise for them on the day. Right, here we have Gary Constable, years back. Uh, Gary helped design and uh, did all the airbrush work for, um, for Aidan's first original Sculpture Studios van. And now, on the Spitfire job, we're creating our own model. Gary's now back from the States, back, back from, uh, from Michigan, wasn't it Gary? Yeah, Bay City, Michigan. Bay City, yeah, Michigan. for about uh, 22 years. 22 years and he does all um, car body exteriors and um, custom artwork and uh, he's kindly come in and he's now helping recreate a lot of uh, old work from the website and put it on here. What's the progress so far, Gary? Uh, well, I've nearly got this side done. A uh, little bit of detailing around the mouth. So, yeah, I plan today and Molly to have this side done and start the other side tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Then we've got the dragon there from Chessington. That's the new online logo, soon to be on the front of the, uh, front of the workshop. It's Iron Maiden's Eddie. A few henna designs that Gary's picked out from the net. We've got uh, Ains old logo on the, on the uh, Oh yeah, the old uh, AH logo. Couldn't have finished it off yet, but I thought it'd be neat to get it on there, a mixture of old and new stuff. And uh, the whole thing of it is like a tattoo design, but like an old school tattoo, like from the 60s and 50s. Yeah, that okay. Sort of feel. We've like mixed it with the, like, what I call like the henna design, just just the flow to keep it, keep it together, because even though there's different designs, I still wanted it to flow. So that's why I put the brand on there, so I'm just incorporate it Sort of tie it together. A bit of continuity on each yeah, side. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. That's good. Just tied in. Gary's showing off his skills. That's right. Look forward to the end result. Yes, I'm right. <laughs> With all the final artwork being finished up on top and a few designs added to the underside of each wing, a top coat of clear 2K car body lacquer is applied. This seals all the paint and makes everything weather resistant and generally gives everything that nice professional sheen finish. We believe the planes are going to be auctioned sometime around Christmas, so we really wanted to create something that would generate a lot of interest to raise money for the charity. Here you can see the completed top design and a couple of details from the underside. This includes the tentacle we made for Nikon last year, mermaids which Aidan's made in the past, and the giant anchors which we made in early 2015. We've even got a miniature Aidan flying the plane himself. As with all the Spitfires being decorated for the event, Pauline's asked each of the sponsors to name their aircraft so a dedicated plaque can be placed underneath each model. Say hello to Sculpture Studios' finished and newly christened Spitfire tattoo. The exercising of the honorary freedom of the borough for 42F Kings Lynn Squadron Air Cadet Corps. Flight Lieutenant Pauline Petch, you are to be congratulated in ensuring that the Corps continues to thrive and go from strength to strength, and for being one of the driving forces 
behind today's monumentous event. These young people are fortunate to have such an inspirational and hard-working commanding officer. Corporate companies and sponsors weren't the only ones decorating the planes. Officials from the area council and locals got involved, some choosing more traditional looks, others choosing far more artistic interpretations of how they think their Spitfire should look. Once the main aircraft were put in place, they were all revealed in ceremony to commence the opening of the Arts Trail. Around the seaport and town of Kings Lynn, the Spitfires were set up on street lamps and flagpoles, and members of the public, including Aidan, were invited to follow the designated trail around the town. Not only was this a great opportunity to commemorate this immense privilege of receiving this honour, but it was a fantastic way to spread awareness, and mark in this moment in history 70 to 75 years ago, and mark in this moment of history on this day. Over the course of the week, celebrations were set up to make this occasion a real event. As well as being official, this week was also enjoyable, with old veterans coming down, dressed as both British and American officers from World War II. Aidan would like to thank the Borough and Arts Council of Kings Lynn, and Pauline Petch especially, for commissioning this work. We only hope the Corps continues to do its town proud. Please feel free to leave any comments below, as they're always appreciated, and hit the subscribe button for our latest videos. You can like Sculpture Studios on Facebook, and for more of our work, visit sculpturestudios.co.uk. Thank you very much for watching, over and out.